Alrighty, hello and welcome to part, where are we at? One, two, three, four, five. Part five of uh, this problem. Uh, we're dealing with part G. If you want to check out earlier parts of the video that have built up to this moment, um, check out the video description. Um, in this question, we're going to deal with the ISLM model, and we're going to use our IS and LM equations to derive the aggregate demand curve. Uh, and then we're going to think about what happens given the uh, fiscal shock and the monetary shock from previous parts. So if you want to see those shocks using the ISLM model, check out the previous videos. Okay. Okay, so what are our building blocks of the aggregate demand curve? Well, we need our IS curve equation, which uh, is right here that we found in an earlier part. And then here's our money demand. Sorry, here's our LM curve equation for, based on the money demand equation uh, right here. So in order to get aggregate demand, um, you know, aggregate demand is um, a function where it's y is a function of the price level. So y is equal to da 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 stuff, the letter p. So in order to get our is curve and our lm curve to um, be organized such, what we're going to do is slightly tweak the lm curve, which before we had is y is equal to 7800 minus 100r, and our money demand equation, which had been written, I think it was y is equal to 100r plus something depending on the money demand, money supply. We now have it written so that it's uh, the LM curve is 100R is equal to this stuff with uh, Y and P in it. And now we have our IS curve, which is 100R is equal to this stuff. So we restructure our IS curve and uh, an LM curve so that we could set them equal to each other and then solve for an equation such as equal to Y. So what do I mean by that? I mean the following. So here's a, the portion of our IS curve that we're gonna set equal to the money demand equation. So now we're gonna solve for y so that we have our aggregate demand equation right here, which is y is equal to uh, a baseline of 850 plus the money supply divided by two times the price level. And then um, because this question is going to have us um, tweak government spending and is also gonna have us tweak the money supply, um, you know, that's what we're going to be doing in this problem. I kind of want to rewrite my aggregate demand equation so that we have it in terms of both government spending and the money supply. So that's what I did here. So I rewrote the IS curve so that our IS curve now is Y is equal to 1300 plus 4 times G minus 100 R. Um, this term right here, 4 G, um, our initial government spending was like 100. Um, so that this term here summed up to the 1700 that we had in our ice curve equation. Um, so now we have a nice clean aggregate demand equation where we could tweak government spending and we could tweak the money supply and see what happens uh, with relative ease. So let's move on to the next two parts of the question. So it was what is what happens given the aggregate demand curve to the aggregate demand curve given fiscal shock and then given the monetary policy changes. So we're going to start off with part A, which was the um, the aggregate demand given the uh, fiscal shock. Okay, so from part A, actually I think it was part C or D, but um, we had an initial level of government spending, which was 100, and then we shifted up to a new government a level of government spending, 150, and then the money supply was kept constant at 1,100. So what happens to aggregate demand? Well, initially, with the initial levels, you know, with government spending at 100 and the money supply at 1,000, we have a aggregate demand equation equal to this. So y is equal to 850 plus 500 divided by p. So then after the shock, you know, the fiscal expansion, we now have, um, you know, plugging, plugging in our new government spending number into here. So two times 150 versus two times 100. We now have our aggregate demand curve equation. So 80 sub two. Uh, is y is equal to 950 plus 500 divided by p. So what can we conclude from this? Given uh, an increase in government spending of 50, we have a shift out of the 80 curve. So that's out or to the right. Uh, and the 80 curve shifts out by 100. Great. So that's as simple, that's as complicated as this question is getting to. All it wants us to do is derive the new aggregate demand equation. Um, the next part asks us to consider part E. So in part E, government spending was constant at 100. You know, there's no shock to that. 
but we were asked to compare when the money supply was 1,000 to when the money supply is to 1,200. So once again, our initial aggregate demand curve, which we just solved, so 80 sub 1 is going to work out to Y is equal to 850 plus 500 divided by the price level. That's with a government spending of 100 and the money supply of 1,000. So what happens to aggregate demand when we increase the money supply? When we increase the money supply to 1,200, where before it was 1,000, when we increase the money supply to 1,200, we have a new aggregate um, demand equation, Y is equal to 850 plus 600 divided by P. So what can we conclude from that? We could conclude the following. Um, given an increase in the money supply of 200, the 80 curve is once again going to shift out to the right, uh, and it's going to shift out to the right by 600 divided by P. So we're not really getting into the details of aggregate demand. The main focus is uh, let's derive the aggregate demand equation, which we've done a couple times, uh, and then also think about what shifts aggregate demand. Well, we found that changing government spending shifts aggregate demand. We found that changing the money supply shifts aggregate demand. And then also, though not done in this equation, not done in this problem, if we were to shift taxes, that would also shift aggregate demand. So now we found different ways to shift aggregate demand. So that's it. That's the last part of this problem. Hopefully it was helpful. Thanks and have a good day. If you want to have a look at the previous problems that led up to the question, you know, there's quite a bit of work that led up. Have a look at the video description um, to those. Um, also, if you found it helpful, be sure to click like. That's it.